Hi, it's Andy again. Welcome to part two of the Target CLI screencasts. This part will cover fabrics in general as well as configuring an iSCSI target via the iSCSI fabric, including ACLs and authentication. If we look at the root of the Target CLI's tree again, we can see that in addition to the top level backstores node, we have other top level entries. These are all fabrics waiting to be configured. Of the five we have here, Target CLI has determined that this machine doesn't have support for the needed hardware for three. But we're interested in iSCSI, which just uses regular TCP IP, so we're good. Note that the other fabrics will have different feature sets, but are generally simpler than iSCSI, so beware. Just like we used the create command for backstores, we, just, we use the create command here too, but within a different configuration node. Target CLI has created a iSCSI target for us uh, using a name that it has generated, but we can also create one that has our own name if we want. And I'm making this up. Within our new target, we have nodes for defining portals, LUNs, and ACLs, but we'll get to those in a second. But first, notice that they're all within TPG1. TPG stands for Target Portal Group. A single target can have multiple sets of independent settings using multiple TPGs. This is a handy feature for expert users, but many setups just need the default TPG, so let's just focus on TPG1. To export our storage over iSCSI, we need to configure three things, a portal, LUNs, and ACLs. First the portal. The portal is the IP address and TCP port that the target will listen on and that the initiators will connect to. iSCSI commonly uses port 3260, so just by saying portals create, we can create, we can listen on port 3260 on all of the available IP addresses but maybe we would rather not listen on all the IP addresses. Maybe there's one in particular, so let's do that instead. Next, we need to assign the storage objects we created for the first screencast to this fabric. So that's what that looks like. Finally, we need to create an ACL for each initiator that we'll be connecting. This allows us to enforce authentication when that initiator connects, and it also allows us to expose only certain LUNs to each initiator. Since usually initiators have exclusive access to a LUN, you can just make the LUN visible to the initiator that should be using it. Both targets and initiators have names that uniquely identify them beyond just being a machine with a particular IP address iSCSI names start with IQN, as we've already seen. You'll need the initiator's name to create the ACL. If you're using the open iSCSI initiator, the name for a particular initiator machine can be found in that machine's Etsy iSCSI initiator name.iSCSI file. For other initiators, refer to the docs for where this information can be found. So I'm going to create one for an initiator name that I'm going to make up. And it'll, it'll help if you make a mistake and have an, a malformed IQN, it should catch some errors, which is nice. So that's what that looks like so far. Now I have a global setting called Auto Add Mapped Lungs set. So when I created the ACL, it automatically mapped the lungs to it. 
So that makes things a little easier, but be aware that that may not be what you want to do in all circumstances. So let's take a look at all what we've done so far. All right, let's talk about authentication. iSCSI supports authentication to log in and use LUNs and a separate authentication to just list available LUNs via the send targets initiator command, known as discovery authentication. For each of these, it also supports not only just having the target check an initiator user ID and password, but also the initiator can check the target's credentials. Mutual authentication. Let's configure for the sake of example, one-way authentication for discovery and mutual authentication for the actual LUN access. So let's do the discovery authentication first. Discovery authentication is configured in the fabric node, iSCSI, where we are. So we need to set a couple things. We need to set discovery auth user ID to be something. We need to set discovery auth password to be something. And then we need to enable it. Let's see what that did. So now, right here, you can see that our target has been configured for discovery authentication. Now, let's go and configure the main phase authentication. So, before I do that, let me just mention that whereas we just configured both enabling and the password information for discovery auth within the iSCSI node, the, the uh, main phase authentication happens in two different places. So, first of all, the overall on-off switch for authentication happens within the TPG node. And let's set that here. Well, actually, let's look at it first. So it's set already. But if we wanted to clear it, we would do and we can see that instead of this line saying enabled auth, this just says enabled. So let's go re-enable that again. Look at it again. Enabled auth. So this is the overall, this is the line where you enable authentication for the uh, main phase authentication. But instead of doing it all at this level, what you do is you enable and disable at the TPG level, at the, and then within each of the ACLs is where you configure the, um, the, um, the authentication information, which means that different initiators can be configured to authenticate with different user and password, which is, which is probably what you want to do. So let's go config, and uh, we can see here that, that uh, something, something isn't right down here. So let's go, let's go make this so that it's right. So here we are within our uh, ACL, and let us set off uh, username set password to be so now we've configured it for authentication but we haven't configured it for mutual authentication so all we need to do beyond that is to configure these two parameters now this is what this is how the target is authenticating back to the initiator. So we do that and we can see that this ACL is configured for mutual authentication. And that's really it. For more information on the configuration file and API access, see part three. But thanks for watching.